Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we are finally starting with the long-awaited uh, TDAC build videos for this year's. Uh, we're gonna uh, start with a very quick and easy one. Uh, today we are going to be building the trigger assembly only, right? We, uh, we will need two of them. I will show you how to build one and you just rinse and repeat. These uh, trigger assemblies are very nice. They, they are two uh, D10 uh, triggers so, and, and they have a very good uh, feel to them. So first click, I don't know if you can hear that, but first click and then the second D10. Very nice, very cool. Uh, for that, you're going to need the 3D printed parts, of course, uh, an enclosure, the lid of the enclosure, and the trigger. We are also going to need a spring. This is a, a 7 by 20 spring, but anything close to that uh, will do. A mini limit switch. And a 6x6 button, the typical one, just like this one. This is a 6x6x4.3. By by, uh, uh, I'm going to be using a different one just because I have them. And these have uh, four legs. I have uh, these ones that only have uh, two legs and it's a 6x6x5. By by but uh, it's a very minimum difference. Both of them will work. So I'm going to be using this today, but you can use if you if you don't have them and you have these, these are actually what were, they were designed for. So first thing you want to do is grab the enclosure, grab the limit switch and a little bit of super glue. We are also going to need, sorry, I forgot to mention one millimeter uh, piano wire. So just grab the limit switch and with the I don't know how you call this with the lever uh, pointing down and down is this side here so the button goes this way you put it in the in the hole for it it's tight it's actually not that tight so it can slide back and forth um, depends on your printer tolerances and you need to put it flush with this end with the, let's say, the outside end. So you will have a little bit of the, you can see the, the button uh, body and the switch body coming out a little bit, but it needs to be flush, kind of flush, this side, the right side. So you hold it there and put a couple of um, drops of super glue to hold it. Be careful with this, uh, with the amount of super glue. This one I'm using is very runny and it's not the first time that I've used too much of it. And then it went inside the, the, the box of the button and, and, and made it so it didn't click. So be careful with that if that's your case. You can start small if you want. If you don't feel it's going to hold, you can just drop a couple, a couple more drops afterwards. So the button is working fine. I'm just going to do that. Just add a couple of small drops more just to be sure it's held in place properly. Yeah, that would be fine. A little bit of accelerator and that's fine. Then we'll grab uh, the 6x6 button. This is also very loose as well. And this needs to be flush. It doesn't really matter because I mean, it's going to be flush in both sides. But the thing is that the, I don't know if you can see that, but the button is the only piece, uh, I mean, the, the you know, the, the, the middle part, the, the, the part that you press is the only one that protrudes. So it's going to be flush both sides, actually, because it's pretty much the same size of the body. So just hold it there. And again, a couple of drops. Start easy with super glue, just to hold it in place. And then you can add more afterwards. Oh, that's a big one. I hope I didn't mess up. I don't think so.
Okay. And now I'm gonna reinforce it a little bit. I mean, this don't need to hold too much strength, but let's make sure it's held in place properly. So when pushing the trigger, it does not fall off. But I mean, you shouldn't be pushing that hard anyway, the trigger. So this is in place now. This is perfect. Next step, <clears throat> we're gonna have, we're gonna uh, grab the piano wire and cut a piece that needs to go all the way through the enclosure and the lid. So it's gonna be something like this long. I already have a piece cut here, which is the length of uh, both the enclosure and the lid and start it in the lid. And this can be a little, especially when you cut it with these ones, this can be a little bit um, sharp. So be careful if the, the hole in the lid and in the enclosure is very uh, tight. So if it doesn't come in very easily, which this one actually came easy, but I do have a pair of dull old clippers. This I don't mind if they get dull. I mean, they are already nicked and, and I don't use this to do precision cuts, but you could grab them and then twist it around and get it in. So you want to get uh, the lid first, then the trigger in, all the way in until it pokes out uh, to the other side, and then we put the trigger in the enclosure. Be careful to put this small lip of the bottom of the trigger into the enclosure, something like this. Don't do, don't do it outside because it's gonna you know, move upwards. So yeah, the lip of the, of the trigger goes in and then we align with the hole in the enclosure, which is, you cannot see it, but I can, it's a small one, whoops and just push it in. It's it's a friction, uh, I mean, it's a tight uh, space, so just help yourself something uh, hard to push with, so you don't hurt your, uh, your fingers. There it is. It went in, right? So now the piano wire goes all the way through it, from the lid to the end of the enclosure. And before we close it, obviously we need to put the spring. So the way I like to do it, there's a small peg uh, in this side and then a hole in the trigger. I like to start with the trigger side and put the, the spring into the hole and then push the rest in and around the peg, just like that. You can now do a little test and see that the first thing to click is the, <clears throat> the limit switch. This will be the first stage. And then you continue pushing and the 6x6 button is pressed. So first, first stage limit switch, 6x6 six six, uh, six six switch, uh, second stage. Now we can roll this to place. We're gonna cut uh, another piece of piano wire. There's no exit hole here, so just cut something. It doesn't really matter because we're gonna be gluing this. Uh, so I'm gonna cut something that is like about, about this long. It doesn't need to be exact, so just it just needs to go through the lid and into this uh, little column here in the enclosure. So I just eyeball it. Something like this. And again, because this can be very sharp, I'm gonna use the old nicked um, clippers to push the piano wire in. And it doesn't matter how far it goes, as long as it's, I mean, it does need to go flush with the lid. There it is. So now it's flush here. 
And now just to reinforce, we could leave it like this, but I, I just like to use a couple of drops of super glue around the enclosure to make sure it's held in place properly. Just a couple of drops. Maybe a little bit here, a little bit in this column here. Doesn't need to be crazy. This is not going to support any, this is not going to be structural. It's just so the lid doesn't come apart. And that's it. That's the trigger assembly finished. Make sure it clicks properly and build another one. You need two of them. So next, next video, we will be uh, mounting this into the grips. So we will be building the uh, lower part of the grips with these pieces. And this one here. <clears throat> That's gonna be uh, one video. This one goes inside here, there. Uh, along with the other buttons, of course. And that's going to be in the next video. So stay tuned and see you in the next one.